All right, Janie, we'll try it again. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have All a question. Right. Yeah. What do you uh, got for me? I've been on three dates with this new guy. Okay. He says um, he's not interested in anybody else. And um, so I went on the dating site to show my friend his picture. And there he was online. Okay. So I called him when I got home and I said, um, are you, I saw you online. Are you looking for somebody else? And he said, I wasn't online. Okay. I don't know how that happened. I said, how long have you been on this dating site? He said two years. So, I mean, he, he adamantly denied it. And I mean, I just can't call well, him. Well, I think his denial is because he's embarrassed. Because if he might have been on looking at your photographs, he might have been looking on because he got an email from somebody and wanted to respond to that person. I mean, there's a variety of reasons. Keep in mind, you'd only gone on three dates with one another until you've established a relationship. But then he could make an argument that you were online too. And what were you doing online? Even though you, you said I was showing pictures of you to a friend of mine showing your pictures to a friend of mine, he could make the same assumption about you being online. Until two people have established that they're in a relationship and they've agreed to take down their dating profiles, until a real relationship is established, it's very common. And the other thing that could be going on, Janie, is that online dating has an addictive quality to it. It can be very addictive to get used to the swiping, to get used to the attention, to get that dopamine rush, that dopamine hit. And I, I had a friend, It took he was in a significant relationship. It was about four months before he stopped. He, he said, I got so addicted to the swiping that he was just swiping, not even interested in anyone. He just got addicted to this. By the way, he's engaged to be married to this woman. But it took him four months to detox from that experience, that's how addictive it can be. Um, so my suspicion is his response was in reaction because he was embarrassed uh, and he didn't wanna own it. Okay, now, so could that be a red flag that he's a liar? Well, I've yet to meet the person who's never lied in their life. So I, I don't know that um, that's indicative in and of itself, but I suspect that's probably the reason behind it. Is there more to this story? Not really. When are you seeing each other again? Wednesday, two days. Okay, okay. What do you guys have planned? We're going to take a walk. I mean, he he offered to go offline. I mean, I just, I, I spent, I had a year relationship with a narcissist, a true cheater and liar, and I'm, I'm just really triggered by any, I get it. any possibilities of lying. So, so that's a fair thing. So you can express to them how you felt because, you know, just so you could say, well, put yourself in my shoes if it was the other way around. How would you feel if you noticed that little green button show online? I mean, you could bring that up. Um, here's the thing. You're still brand new. So, I'm, and here's the, the, I think his purpose for saying he wants to go offline is because it can be rather distracting. That's the other thing. There's an addictive quality, but there's a distractive quality. When you meet someone, you like them. I believe in dating one person at a time. So anytime we're connected to the apps and someone pops, like he might've got a message from somebody and it's like, oh, I just clicked the button for a second. Could have been happening too. Um, so so I, I think that's something when you guys to agree to explore a relationship together, um, you would, I would say at that point, you know, you could um, have that conversation about taking each other offline. And if he's already opened it, you just go, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I still like looking at your pictures <laughs> and showing my friends your pictures. Maybe I'll download those pictures. You know, that's another thing you can do. But this does happen frequently. Okay, well, I won't do anything drastic then. Wait, but. someone just wrote. Now, Billy says, investigate your suspicions in a creative way without accusing him. So I recognize that you said that you had a relationship with a narcissist and someone who's a liar. And I recognize that this is hard to 
to in this particular case because it might seem like his actions didn't match his words or, you know, in this particular case. I, I mean, to the extent that I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, I'm just speculating as to why he might not have have responded that way. I'm just speculating as his why he responded that way. I think he was on, but he was embarrassed and didn't want to admit it uh, for whatever reason, because it's private to him. So you bringing it out, put him in an awkward situation where he was caught having to, in his mind, probably he didn't want to lie, but I mean, it could have been, but uh, he didn't want to be in a position to have to tell the truth. And when you're stuck, I don't want to tell the truth as to why, but I'm stuck because there's no other option but to lie, you know? Well, I'll go with the truth. Well, again, I mean, in okay. his mind, he did not want to say his truth. Okay. I know you want the truth, but in his mind, he didn't want to be he didn't want to give his truth because there, he might have been chatting with another woman or he might have, you know, for whatever reason, but he got caught in the deer in the headlights and he didn't know what to do. It's just like, OK, you know, better example when a policeman comes up to you and says, you know, you're speeding. No, I wasn't. Or a policeman says, you've been drinking. No, I wasn't. You know, like we it's just our natural reaction because we don't want to confess in that. Mo he was trapped into having to confess what was going on and he didn't want to because it's not it's not like he instigated a lie to you he was he was caught in the moment and didn't know i'm speculating uh his reaction was that he didn't want to tell the truth and the other the option is to not tell the truth which is effectively a lie but i would say if your spider senses are up just start paying attention you know just being mindful try to do your due diligence find out about his past relationships share your past relationships that's what the dating process is it's a getting to know you process with another human being does that help yeah i mean i i was thinking i wasn't going to write it off and i'll just continue carefully um, yeah, and, and just keep in mind, you know what, until two people have agreed to, you know, exclusivity, he's a free agent, he's allowed to do whatever he's want. So in a way, you are, you know, even though he might have said he was offline, you know, might have said, I'm taking myself offline. Um, he's still a free agent, he's allowed to do whatever he wants. Yeah, well, he's the one that volunteered, you know. I'm not well, men do that. impetuous, silly things all the time. I always say men are good. Most men are good guys. They're just bad daters, you know? So. Okay, well. And he might have just acted, or he might have clicked the button unaware and only for a second and then went back offline. I mean, sometimes you click on, you get an email from a dating app, you click on it, you then, you know, you don't even look at what's on going on. So there's a variety. I mean, I'm, I'm saying this isn't enough to crucify him yet or, or okay. convict him of the crime. Okay. Okay. I won't. Thank you. All right, Janie. Good luck. Giving you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug. Thanks for being on. I appreciate it. So Janie brought up a great question about, um, you know, um, when to some degree, he was caught in a lie. I think his reasons behind it was he just, he, he didn't want to lie. I speculate he just didn't want to tell the truth, which is effectively a lie. Sometimes we find ourselves in those positions and we're not prepared and it's natural to react possibly the way he did. It could have been a force, uh, uh, could have been an oversight on his part and he actually didn't think he was online. That's quite possible. I doubt it, but that's quite possible. This is, you know what I don't like? The dating sites tell you when a person's online. Talk about, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not sure I like that little green button for that reason, because it creates, a, you know, think about it. The, the dating sites also have a destructive nature in them, given that it has that little green light. Anyway, that was a great question by Janie. Thanks so much for bringing it up. Hey, folks, we shared a lot of things tonight. We talked about some movies. We talked about the avoidant man and the idea of the perfect relationship for that avoidant man. Um, and, and just recognize that I know it sucks out there. It can feel that way. 
But good people are meeting all the time. Good relationships are happening every day. What matters most is doing your inner work, doing the inner work to speak your truth, do it from a kind place, stand up for your sovereignty, know your standards, lay your cards on the table, know the rules of engagement. Don't be unafraid. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable, to be authentic, to be transparent. Because good people exist, both men and women alike. And when we when we operate from a place of sovereignty, we become a more of a magnetic attractor for what we want. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know if it is. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis. You can find my books I recommend. Follow me on Instagram. Get my dating vows all listed below. And also, we'd appreciate some love to the Connor Asley Scholarship Fund before we wrap up tonight. I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, that a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. I want to thank Janie for being on. I want to thank Renee and Natty Chitcrafts and Debbie Muller and McCoy Oak Hill Farm and Melanie and Jane Spitfire and Power Chi and Beach Lover and Janie X and Renee, Brown Canetta, Jane Spitfire, Rosie, Rose, OQ, Billy Holt. Uh, if Brian's in the house, Wine Lady Candace, um, ba, 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 Monique, Everybody, Renee, I think I might have said your name. Holly, big Jane Spitfire, Amik, uh, Vanette, still life pa painter. Uh, everyone, thanks for the love. Appreciate it. Wishing you a super duper wonderful, fantastic evening. Be well. Thanks. Bye bye.